more was spent on battery factories in 2022 than on new solar and wind factories combined. That's $45 billion spent on battery manufacturing. Battery prices have been in a free fall for the last few decades, but what does that really mean for home battery backup? There are a lot of videos here on YouTube about home battery prices falling, but this video is going to be a little different because what I'm going to do is show you how to calculate if it makes financial sense for you. Is now the time to finally splurge on a home battery. But before we get to that, a little bit of a history lesson, and I will also stamp the timeline below for you if you just want to skip to the math part. And finally, last thing, if you will find this video interesting, please do not be stingy. Splurge on the like and the subscribe button. They are absolutely free. Batteries have been around for over 200 years. For most of their history, they were just too heavy and their energy density too low to be practical. Did you know that in the 1900s, over one third of the cars in the United States were actually battery powered? But because of their size, weight, and low energy density, they had very limited range and could not compete against internal combustion engines, so they simply disappeared. The development of higher battery energy density plateaued for over half a century until 1970s, and in the early early 1990s, lithium-ion batteries entered the market. Rapid innovations in energy density and price declines in the decades that followed enabled new uses for lithium-ion batteries in electronics, such as a cell phone or a laptop. As energy density continued to climb, lithium battery applications in cars actually became feasible. Home backup battery also started to become a thing. Energy density has kept rising year after year, increasing expectations that new applications and heavy trucks and even aviation may actually become possible. Now, why lithium ion versus other battery types? Well, it's lightweight, high energy density, fairly long lasting and relatively cheap and actually physically available for you and me. Now, in 1990s, lithium ion batteries were very expensive, costing over $7,500 per kilowatt hour. Fast forward to today, we are looking at prices of around $130 per kilowatt hour. This is a drastic drop of 98%. These prices are at the battery cell and pack level, but some retailers are selling batteries to end user for as low as $195 per kilowatt hour. I will make sure to link those battery for you down below. So why this huge drop? There's three main reasons, advancement in energy density, economies of scale, and improvements in manufacturing efficiency. So let's break this down a little bit more. Energy density in 1991 was around 100 watt hours per kilogram. Today, it is around 300 watt hours per kilogram. Just last year, researchers at the Chinese Science Institute in Beijing built a lithium battery with an energy density of over 700 watt hours per kilogram. This is still in the lab, but it shows that there's still a lot of room for farther growth. Now, for the first lithium ion battery, it was about 15 years from the lab all the way to the commercial availability. But as time progressed, manufacturing efficiency got much, much better. So it has shortened that time between it being actually in the lab to the point where it's actually in consumers' hands. Now, let's talk economies of scale as demand went through the roof. So to keep up with this demand, more was spent on battery factories in 2022 than on new solar and wind factories combined. That's $45 billion spent on battery manufacturing. Now, finally, let's get to the heart of this video and do the calculation to determine if a home battery is worth it to you. All these price drops sound great, but is it still too expensive? Will it actually save you money or is it just a nice luxury to have in the event of a power outage? When I Google the average Powerwall installation cost, I get $14,700. That is a net price of $10,290 after the 30% tax credit. The warranty says 10 years and unlimited charge cycles. So if fully discharged daily over 10 years, you get 49,275 kilowatt hours of power that can be moved through the battery in the warranty period. Now for the heart of this calculation, 
divide the price by the throughput and this comes out to about 20.88 cents per kilowatt hour of that power that has moved through the battery. But we need to go even deeper because one thing that was not factored into this calculation is the capacity degradation. So in the warranty docs, it says unlimited cycles for regular home use or 37,800 kilowatt hours throughput. So if we divide it by 365 days per year for 10 years, we get about 10.4 kilowatt hours of daily use, which happens to be only slightly lower than the general recommendations to use only about 80% of battery capacity daily. So now the end result of our cost per one kilowatt hour is 27.22 cents. If 27 cents is less than your utility rate, you will save money. A couple caveats about that 27 cents though. So it will likely be lower than that since the calculation is based on the warranty period. But obviously the battery will keep working after the 10 years, although at a lower capacity, but there will still be additional throughput that would bring that cost down. So now you have to do the math yourself based on your particular utility situation. For example, if you are in Texas and have really good net metering, like one-to-one, -one, adding that extra battery cost might not make any financial financial sense. In the past year, however, a lot of utilities across the United States have restructured their net metering policies to pay you less or even a wholesale or what's called avoided cost rate for excess solar generation. In that case, you might start seeing a return on investment because the excess solar power generation gets stored in your battery for later use instead of being sold for a fraction of your utility rate. Another huge factor that I cannot put a price on is what the value of peace of mind is for any given homeowner. That no matter what net metering policy is, you are in control of your own power or if the grid fails, your family is safe. Now in this video, I really wanted to show you that these price drops isn't just, aren't just numbers on a chart. I wanted you to know how to determine if a home battery makes sense for you. I really hope that you will find this video helpful. Thank you again so much for watching. Do not forget to click on that like and the subscribe button. And also follow me on Instagram if you want to at solargirl.dallas and share your thoughts finally in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.